Hello. Are you Hello. right? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I don't know. Suddenly, there's a mini stroke before we're all there. Yeah. Hello, um, everybody. Hello, Harley. Hello, You've got Josh. A great T-shirt on. Thank you very much. I mean, you know, all from Ouroboros screen printing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JS and the Billy's design. Nice. I mean, you I, couldn't have chosen a better. We just uploaded better. a picture and. This is not in the picture, which I feel is a little bit of a shame. That's fine. I mean, you know, we're here to promote your face. Well, well I guess my face sure. is quite a thing. We are the Harley and Josh Show. We are your music podcast by musicians yeah. for anyone. Yeah. Not just for musicians. Uh, this Literally week, anyone. We've got some music by Hot Tramp. We've got music from Back to the Point, as well as music from little old me, Josh Locke. Um, <laughs> because... I can. Yeah, um, yeah. And we've also got some news. Plenty of news. About while she he- while she heaps, <laughs> <laughs> while she heaves, while she sleeps, have released a news breaking t-shirt, um, which we'll be talking about what's on the t-shirt and why it's controversial later on, as well as Radio Payola is alive and well in the US. Harley found this out with his investigative reporting. Um, yeah. yeah, so we'll be talking about that a bit later. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if, I want to ask you something, Harley. Oh, what what you were going to ask I, me something? I was gonna, I was going to go forwards just to say uh, <gasps> our music is available for for everyone. And uh, I was I don't know if you look, keep an eye on our on our stats. We oh. had a nice old spike last week. All right, because one guy in Spain Somebody put something in our drink. One guy in Spain downloaded fifty episodes all at once. Oh, geez, guys. Um, and went back through the back catalogue. So uh, if you're a if you if you were the person who recently done that, thank you for doing that. Nice one, man. Um, it really makes us look good. Muchos gracias. <laughs> hey, I don't know any Spanish, so I'm, I'm <laughs> assuming wife, yeah. what you said was good. Yes, good. Um, good. I'm hoping that guy knows English as well. Otherwise. Yeah, we have failed. He's him. got a long fifty episodes. <laughs> um, but yeah, Harley. What'd you do? Please tell me. I well, thank you very much. Um, I've done. Uh, <laughs> I I found this weird because I was like, I look a wig. I I always look through my. Uh, I've got a big spreadsheet when I do my uh, like my I'm taxes and stuff, asleep. and I have a big spreadsheet of all the jobs that I've done. All right. I went, I've only done one job this week. <gasps> because it's like we've got not a lot of stuff going on during the week. I was in the shop. That's not done uh, mm. as a as a self-employed person. Mm. Um, so I only really had one job, which, which was my gig. But uh-huh. I've actually done lots of other stuff yes, as exactly. well. You're self-employed. So th- having a job doesn't mean that's the only time you worked. No, no. Um, so it's kind of been a, a weird one. I've done a, a lot of... I say I've done a lot of writing. I've been working a lot yeah. of stuff uh, just by walking around and working in my head because I'm really bad at writing stuff down. And it's hard, yeah. I kind of sort of walk, I come out of my house, take a left and walk into a field mm. and kind of sort of sing to myself when there's no one who can hear me. But this uh, is like gladiator. You're just walking through the fields with your hands. And I, nice. I realised I was doing this the other day. I, can't remember, I was coming back from like the shop or something and I was going, no, 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 no. And I, I realised, I was like, there's people probably listening to me doing this and I look I'm like insane. I'm absolutely insane. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what happens when you're a creative, though, because you're yeah. constantly doing that. And I'm always also doing it and I, I have to try and tell myself to switch off when I go see a band at a gig. Mm-hmm. And I sit there and they've they got a whole song going on and I'm sitting again. And I'm like, I'm writing bass lines as I go. Amazing. <laughs> and just going, oh, that'd be a really cool little thing and kind of just hearing the sounds and stuff like that. Because when I'm gigging and I do a fill or like a little bass lick in there, I'm playing along and I'm thinking four bars ahead and going, oh, yeah, okay. And then I do it. Mm. So I kind of sing it around doo, 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 whilst, in my, whilst I'm just going... Boom, boom, <laughs> boom. And then I, then I add it in. So it was a really kind of... Is this when you're in the crowd as well? Yep. So that would be the strangest heckle if you were playing on stage and then somebody, you're just like, yeah, this next song is called Blood Diamond. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, it doesn't sound like that. No. Skeckling. <laughs> Scatling, yeah. I like it. Very good. Oh, that's cool, mate. So the writing for, literally just for yourself or just for the, you know, maybe writing for some other people? Um, think? Just for myself, um... Uh, after our, was it last week we bumped into Angel after the show? Yes, indeed. Directly after the show, and she came down to say hi. It was really nice. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Yeah. Really nice. And um, 
she she said this, which is, uh, I'm going to quote her, and this is advice to everyone who's listening who is in any way musical. We go, she says, 2019 is the time to make stuff happen. Yeah. Because we're getting such a good music scene. I've bumped into a few different people this week who was just going, it's really taken off around here. Yeah. There's a real scene of people and not the same scene that used to be about when we were younger, when we said there was a really good scene then, but mm. of... Mature it's a good mu- local scene. Yeah, of mature yeah. musicians kind of doing it and uh, musicians around are also kind of upping their understanding of the music industry yeah. all with, like, you know, the, the research that they get from the Harley and Josh show. Little Ipswich Renaissance. Um, and it's really good. And there's, of there's, course. there are eyes looking to us Yeah, that's to what I was just thinking music. of. Like the, the, the nation yeah. uh, and the world itself will be turning its eyes towards Ipswich so for the world wrecking, if, record-breaking tour that's finishing up here, which we talked about before. Yeah, yeah. So if you're, if, you're, if you're sitting on some music that you're like, I'd like to get this going, now's the time to get this going. If you, mm-hmm. And if you need some advice, if you're, if you're stuck for ideas or not quite sure how you're going to achieve that, um, please do drop us an email. We'll help where we can. Um, any questions you have, we'll answer them. We can do please some do. little question and answers all the time. From so. professional musicians to your brain. I mean, uh-huh. it's funny just talking about writing there. I have a reminder on my phone that literally just went off as the show started and it just says, write. <laughs> <laughs> and I have that go off every day and it's just like, write something. Write something. doesn't oh, have to be a full song. You're really good at setting reminders to do stuff, aren't you? Yes. You're, you do that with your social media and that's a really cool thing which I uh, regularly do not uh, yeah, take it depends on board. whether you care about it or not. I mean, yeah. like, you know, that's I'm not lucky because a... I've got, uh, like, with my band, I've got a few other people who are a bit better at social media mm. than me, so they're a bit more active on that kind of thing. Mm. And I'd like just to push all the work their way because I, I, I hate it. I hate all of that sloping shoulders. Yeah. Uh, so um, what else did you do? Harley? So apart from walking around the streets of Ipswich and Felix Stone, mumbling to myself, getting, um, I did a studio session with Noah Evans. Oh, cool. Uh, he's written a couple of new songs. He came to the studio. Uh, we did a day. It was myself. Uh, I played some bass and recorded Rainer on drums. Um, and Noah played some acoustic guitar, played some electric guitar, did some vocals. Um, and we had a ho- two whole songs pretty much finished Brilliant. by the end of the day. Uh, he's got another session with me uh, later on in the month where we're just going to do some more backing vocals and put some maybe tambourine on I forget that, that he's Rendlesham-based and yeah. Area 51 is just right over the road. How yeah. useful is that? That's great. It was great because his, uh, his mum was, uh, was was his taxi for the day, but she oh, sort yeah. of set him up. She's, she's also like, everything else. She's a manager. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Steph is great. Yeah. Um, uh, but she was sort of, I'm just going to go in for a bit, you know, so, do you want me to bring around a cup of tea or anything and stuff like that? And she brought around some snacks for us for lunch, which was great because I, I never, whenever I do a studio session, I always forget to take a packed lunch and you don't always have time to run out and get food and come mm, back. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, she made sure that we were fed and watered and uh, really looked after us. And Noah wrote some cracking tunes. And by the end, I was really happy with, with like the mix, like a 10 minute mix, but it sounded like a, uh, a, produced song all the gaps were filled right. there was a nice kind of uh, pad of music to to, to back him up yeah, and stuff and like that not even mixed and mastered yet that's, no that's what's great about it when you get that in a, in a studio yeah. session we just like this sounds finished already it was I the can't f- wait to have it was the first time i'd recorded uh i don't know if it's the first time i'd recorded rainer's drum kit but certainly his new snare drum new one yeah, yeah and his snare is amazing Ooh. really good really popping cuts through the mix really well and just sounds like a snare drum a shit. pudding yeah Mm. All about the batter pudding boy. So, um, yeah, Rainer did a great job. Um, there was a point where uh, Noah turned to me and was like, Rainer's really good. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like his timing was impeccable. Yeah. We were playing to click, On obviously, click, yeah. just because we were multi-tracking, so it made things a bit easier for that kind of thing. And edit, and I haven't had to do any editing to Rainer's drums at all. Good. We cut one of the songs he did all in one take, one of the other songs we cut two sections in. Mm-hmm. Um only because we went, oh, should we do this fill on the toms rather than on the snare? Mm-hmm. And we just, one take was better and we just put it in. So it wasn't like, he could have aced that uh, all in one take um, had we have spent another like 10 minutes on the drums. Mm. But we were trying to fit everything all in yeah. one and got it going. Sometimes you have to work with time constraints. Yeah, we and we were really against the clock because we had to finish by four because I had to go set up for a wedding ah. later that evening. Which was great. Weird wedding you were talking about. It was a weird wedding. Now I say it was a weird wedding. I was expecting to. It was a weird wedding. I was expecting it to be a lot weirder than it was, <laughs> because we were told to set up at five o'clock, and right. were given a rundown of all of what was happening. Which is late for a wedding. Yeah, 
and we were going to be setting up at the same time as the speeches started. Christ. In the same room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see the stress in your eyes. No, no. <laughs> so we there was a, like a curtain over our over right. our bit, so it wasn't like in the same room and. But we had to be whispering and no dropping boxes, like, quietly and being very careful that, you know, we didn't accidentally, like, drop our keys on the snare drum and stuff yeah. like that. And um, and then we weren't able to set uh, do sound check until half seven. Right. So we had two, hour, two and a half hours to set up, although we were done within the Can't hour. Yeah, had a bite yeah. to eat. The food was amazing. Mm. We had venison. It was great. Mm. Um, and Venison's then, dear, isn't it? Hey. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Well, we made that joke so many times. Squeezed it in there. <laughs> um, when I say it wasn't particularly uh, a, a, a conventional wedding, and we were expecting it to be very different because there was no first dance. I don't know how many, how many weddings you've done where you haven't done a first dance. It's, it's, I could count them on one hand. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've done weddings where they want the first dance done to a CD rather than yeah. playing along to us. Uh, or MP3 for younger listeners. Um, <laughs> What's the CD? Yeah. But... The um, what was also weird is the bride and groom were keeping their own name. There right. was no um, weird kind of there weren't double barrels or anything. No, no. Um, so I was like, this is this is a very unconventional wedding. But mm. when we got there, it was very normal. Uh, it was purely because I say purely because um, the bride is uh, a strong feminist. I think she's uh, like. Uh, is quite active in a few uh, feminist communities and stuff, and she didn't want to uh, be a part of the whole kind of um, the the plain, patriarchy. Yeah, of the woman taking the man's name, uh, and the first dance is kind of very thing. much yeah of of the the, the father handing over a daughter, you yeah, know, stuff that like that. Thing, yeah. um, they were wanting to be a bit more progressive than that, and kind of which is great, it's really really good, and you know, but they were just the loveliest people. It was the most. Um, just really nice wedding. Not the most, um, like, biggest wedding of all time. Not a lot of people there, probably maybe a 100 max. Mm -hmm. um, but they were all up for a good time. The other thing that wasn't very conventional as well, which I was very okay with, mm -hmm. the wedding cake wasn't a cake. Oh. It was a stack of profiteroles, <laughs> but filled with custard oh, and right. glazed in caramel. I was, oh, my God, they were the best. <laughs> nice. I felt, I like... By the second set, they were like, help yourself. So I had a handful of There was so much sugar in them. I was just like proper buzzing from like just sugar overdose. I was like, I'm going to crash like halfway through the second set. <laughs> and luckily, I didn't crash until we were packing down. But then we were packing down. Oh, <laughs> so exactly, yeah. It was just a like really strange kind of thing. And um, that was, yeah. You did stuff. I did stuff. Oh, mate. Holy did stuff well done buddy um just as you were finishing up your story there i saw jamie from punch studios outside he's doing some recordings and things like this and it's just started tipping it down raining and he just gave me this look of like i have to go out in this <laughs> he just I, legged it away in his in his grace of of bandana and hair whilst i was talking i was a little bit distracted i was like is there a fan on because through the mic it just, you, you probably hear it coming through the mix like that's just the rain on it's the, the roof. Rain. It's, it's mad. It's super crazy. Anyway, right, let's play some music. This week, uh, we haven't played these guys before, um, but this is uh, Sam from East Town Pirates, uh, uh, yes. main band, and they're sort of going quite hard with this now. They're going great. They're, 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 they're releasing stuff uh, a lot more regularly now. I think they're going to be sort of, you know, really going hard with it. This is the band called Back to the Point. Um, there's a lyric video for this. It's actually really good on their Facebook profile. This one's called Been, Been There Too. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, I'm going to tell you, mate. <laughs> Straight in. I'm going to tell you, mate. Jump um, on it. Yeah, thanks very much to Back to the Point. That yeah. was uh, Being There too. That is available on iTunes and Spotify and all the great streaming and digital platforms. I'm liking the guitarist on that. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, and it was, you know, it's got some good pace to it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. They're playing this weekend. Stick around for the gig list to find out where. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did some things. Uh, we're in the middle of summer holidays at the moment. Oh, so, there we are. my teacher. Teaching is is uh, not as you know brutal as it usually is. You know, I'd usually be teaching yeah. at least sort of three four days a week at the moment. I am teaching sort of two days of the week, uh, but not so full on. We know. were um, 
discussing this with Rob and Rainer the other day. Um, Rob Rainer, the director of Spinal Tap. No. Oh. Um, Rob Damn. Lewis and Rainer Vandell. Oh. It used to be that like August was going to be was generally our like highest paid month or our busiest month because that's when the gigs take off. Mm. But then now we're all kind of teaching a bit more. It kind of either evens out or sometimes like August drop tends down, to be a, yeah. a drop down because. Mm. You, even though you're still doing three gigs a week, you're not teaching five days yeah. a week like we used to. Exactly. So I'm still, yeah, I'm teaching some stuff from home yeah. and also going to people's houses, um, which is, and, you know, got, yeah, some really nice sort of uh, more lax things. I think I was talking about this last time where I can, I'm not so highly strong from being at school all day and yeah. sort of having, having to keep sort of like 10 kids in line, you know, during a lesson and then onto another school of 10 kids, you know, at, yeah. at, at each time. Um, you know, it's a bit more, I can be, I can be like, okay, so what specifically do you want to be working on? Have you been practicing? And I'm not as mad when they say I haven't been practicing because I've been like, I haven't just had 30 kids tell me they haven't practiced today. <laughs> it's yeah. just one. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so that's been nice. Um, I, so I, because I've got more time, I've actually been much better on my own practice regime. There is this thing yeah. of like, just because you're playing all the time doesn't mean you're practicing all the time. I mean, I, uh, you know, I may be playing three, four times a weekend, but I'm still playing stuff that I've played a bunch of times before. I get to experiment a bit with my improvisation, but not so much where I'm learning on stage as much as I have been before. Um, Because you get a bit stuck in a rut. So I've been, my practice kind of regime this week has been more uh, scale positions. Okay. So you know how on um, pentatonic scales, some people might get lost with this at the moment, but pentatonic scales, pentatonic, pentagram, pentagon, basically five tones to it. Five, pentatonic, five tones. Um, so that means that you can start and finish that scale in five different places yeah. along the neck. Um, and that gives you different positions to play, um, different licks. So you get different fingerings for different licks, which sound different and also exercise your fingers in, in better ways. So, you know, there's the five different shapes of the pentatonic scales. Everybody, you know, of an intermediate to advanced level knows that. Um, the the thing I've been trying to practice is doing that with uh, heptatonic scales or okay. diatonic scales, which uh, heptatonic, heptagon, heptagram, um, seven notes. So just trying to add, do, so like a major scale has seven tones in it, yeah. then you uh, just finding, a, it's like, it's so just as you do with the modes. It's it essentially is modes. Is modes, but then rooting everything exactly. to the same yeah tonic. exactly so trying to sort of figure that out um across the neck just to explore the, the fingerboard a bit more and it, it just it, yeah, i don't know it uh it even though i've been playing for 18 years now i still sit there and go oh because this and like you know that just shows you've got to practice every day to, to quote episode one josh every day's a school day every day's a school day yeah, isn't that for it? A while, oh you? my goodness my catchphrase is back my catchphrase is back um, so yeah, I've been doing that and also inversions as well. So chord inversions, um, for anybody who's listening, who's interested in music theory, uh, chords are made up of three or four, no- three or more notes. Um, and what you can do with inversions is, so if you've got a chord that is C, E, G, and B, which is a C major seven, mm. you can start the chord from C, then you can, uh, make an inversion, which is the uh, first inversion, which would be the E. So you've, I said C, E, G, and B, right? So E was the second note. So yeah. it becomes the first inversion because you've inverted the, the chord so that the E is now in the bass. And the same with, with all the other ones. So E, C, E, G, B, and B, making yeah. that chord up, but using all of those notes within there as the root note. Um, so you'd be sitting there going, oh, what's the point? You know, it just sounds like a, a sort of like maths exercise. But it does help you with jazz comping. Yeah. Um, jazz comping is basically where you, if, you, if you've been given um, just a chord sequence to go over for to back somebody with... Um, with you know while they're soloing um you know just staying on the same chord can sometimes sound a little bit dull and also just makes the um I don't know the progression underneath the solo seem a little bit flat and, and unmoving yeah. so if you are just sort of going through the inversions you're still playing the same chord but you're just it, the same the way as like how a bass is going doom 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 you can do that with chords it's like doom jack 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 yeah but you're changing instead of just sort of keeping the same chord and moving the bass line you're moving the bass line as well as the chord so it can just yeah, it's it's nice challenging thing as well as um, something that sounds good. So mm. that's what my mind practice. My like motivation for stuff like that. I've been doing stuff with uh, musicians in the past, and I will continue. Where I'm working with someone, especially someone like Andy, who's very Hopgood. 
Annie Hopkins, yes. She's very musically minded um, and she'll throw stuff like that out there um, quite often and go, do this, oh yeah, but do this with this inversion. And then I'm kind of like working it out as I go. Yeah. If I've done that, working it out in my home context and she goes, play that in the second inversion and you go, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to think about it and it means you're just, you're not having to learn at a rehearsal. Yeah, and it puts you up there with, uh, you know, in terms of whether people will hire you a bit easier, but yeah. you can just do stuff on the fly a little bit easier. So yeah. anyway, yeah, that's been my practice. Um, like you said, now we've now we've got more time during the week. I've put, been putting reminders on my phone to do more social media, and I've just been way more present on my social media platforms across Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, yeah. and yeah, as many as I can find. Amazing. Um, which has been great. It's made me feel a bit more like I'm putting the time into... Uh, you know, promoting without having to pay loads of money. That's another good thing about social yeah. media, that, that, but timing it properly. So, you know, tweeting at 9 a.m., putting Instagram posts at 11, a Facebook post at 12, and then putting a Facebook post and a Twitter post about mm. 5 o'clock because yeah. that's just when traffic is really good. Um, it's made me feel like I'm actually doing something that um, I haven't had to pay for and I'm still getting some quite good, yeah. um, you know, insights from it and, and getting new likes and things like this. Do you do, you do pay for uh, to promote the, stuff the odd time. thing depending on yeah, what it is like, like when you've got a big release or stuff coming up yeah like and i've just released a, a single this week which i'm gonna play at the end of the show Ooh. um and that you know i'll boost that yeah but the rest of it would just be a photo you know um yeah. saying we're gigging somewhere and but even if you're paying for for uh promotion and stuff on with on facebook or on instagram i've not paid for instagram stuff like but i've only ever done facebook because i'm old school and uh, i'm not down with the kids but you're still paying a lot less than what you would in the past from like a magazine ad or stuff like that. Hmm. It's a lot more affordable form of marketing that sees a lot more people. Absolutely. But yeah, so that's been fine just to be doing that a bit more. I had a, well, sort of a practice with Two Little Good Times and the Good Times Republic. That's our sort yep. of new uh, little project. Um, we're playing at Maui Wowie on Friday night, Maui's Wowies, uh, at nine o'clock. And uh, well, basically, we we turned up late because Murray and I were getting haircuts um, together. But then, um, yeah, we found out we had to be out because uh, some of the, the kids from the Rock Project were there practicing uh, right after us. So there right. was Alicia, there was Ryan, awesome. there was Isaac. Uh, it was just amazing. We were just nice. seeing them all. It was good. Anyway, but um, yeah, so we literally just did a tech rehearsal, which is a really good idea for any bands that are listening. Just sit down and go through a tech rider with with everybody there just saying okay so if we're doing a festival what gear are you going to be are you going to be bringing um and what mics are you expecting because you might just turn up to a festival and uh have not brought an amp and expecting that they've got a backline yeah but you didn't check and they don't have backline and because you didn't send them a tech rider they didn't sit and go send back to you and say you need to bring your own amps and stuff yeah. um you know some drummers might be like i want overheads um, mm. but they're only micing up kick and snare. So, you know, different things like that. So the overheads would be the mics above the drummer. Picking over up the, the head. S- overhead, right? Picking up the cymbals, etc. So, you know, unless you specify that in a tech rider, there's no point in doing it. And so, this is quite a complex setup as well, isn't it, in terms of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, we've got two things. guitars, bass, uh, drums, sax, backing vocals, as well as uh, Sophie DJing live and, yeah. and, and sort of having lots of interesting that's sounds quite, coming out. That's quite complex because you're... Cause you're playing got, along with the track, yeah, and, like, and they've clicked time and stuff to like come that. through. Yeah, so that's what Rich and her were sorting out was going through having the click being sent to his monitors, the which are in his ears. So he's got in ear yeah. monitors, like we've talked about before. Um, so, but making it so that the click goes to his ear, but not to the front of house, which yeah. is I don't know. Like I've, I've never had to do it before because I've never played to click really. Um, I mean, apart from recording. Yeah. Uh, so live, I'm just like, just put a speaker in front of me and turn it up full. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put earplugs in. Um, yeah. So that was really useful. I had a last minute gig on the Thursday in Chelmsford. All right. Um, which I was going to mention on, on the Monday, but it wasn't a done thing. Um, so yeah, I was at the basement in Chelmsford um, with Oh Maddie. Yeah. And another band called Rolling Machine. And basically they, they, they didn't have any uh, support. Uh, one so Roland Machine are from South End, South, South End, End. and uh, Oh Maddie are from Chelmsford or the, thereabouts, and it was really nice because 
I just got to hang out with them. And, I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of O'Maddy, as we've, we've talked about before. Great band, yeah. Oh, Maddy. We've played it on this show before. Um, on the Harley and Joshua Spotify playlist? Yes, they are on the opposite Harley and Joshua Spotify playlist. Follow that for your listening pleasures. Um, yeah, and uh, so I just got to hang out with them and have a beer beforehand and just talk about music and uh, and, and the industry and what's going on. Um, what's going on? Um, and yeah, that was really nice. They just so... It, um, it was a really interesting thing to talk about ego later on with Omadi because they don't have any, but on stage they do. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, cool. Um, there, yeah. So there was, it was, there weren't a huge amount of people there, um, but Rich and I were talking about this. Um, the, so I was the first, um, you know, I was the support act. Mm. So I was the first act on, and there weren't a lot of people there. It was a Thursday night, and nobody knows me in Chelmsford, so right. I wasn't expecting anybody to turn up. But the bands came and watched me. Uh, both bands. I hadn't met Roland Machine before, but I'd met O'Maddy and they were just being nice and supportive. And they brought their fans in to watch as well. Great. Um, so uh, Roland Machine were on after me. That's not my usual type of music. They're quite sort of like Brit pop, and, and I don't listen to a lot of Brit pop, but I was like, you know, they watched me, so I'll go watch them. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing. Very is Because so. they didn't have a lot of a big crowd in there. They're from South End, they're not from Chelmsford, so. You know, they're not going to have a huge amount of people there. So I made sure to watch their entire set as well as watch the entirety of O'Manny's before I went home. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it really does help just to build morale within bands. If you're in a support act or if you're in a headline band, watch the other bands. Unless you have to get there late or you have to leave early for yeah. another gig. Um, just make the effort because all it's going to do is going to get you more gigs because those bands will want to play with you again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had that. We had a gig at the Newborn Fox on the Friday with Murray and I. That was funny as heck because the uh, it was supposed to be an outdoor festival, but it got seriously rained off. Like it was like course, yeah. bucketing it down as well as the wind was howling. It was amazing. Gusting and a blow. Yeah, it was blowing a hurley. Um, so yeah, it was really really quite crazy um so they they moved it inside um and man that place is not big <laughs> so it was just murray and i we were super crammed in because a lot of people knew that it wasn't going on outside but they knew that we were still playing oh, that's so it great. still turned up which was really nice um and uh yeah they just absolutely rammed the place mm. really really nice yeah, nice vibes. Nah. Um, yeah, we'll have to go play there again. Um, quick shout out to Bronwyn and Gemma on the Night Jars. They played on Saturday night. I was there for a stag do, just for a mate of mine. Oh, awesome. But they happened to be playing. I didn't realise, so I stuck and watched them for a little bit. Yeah. Bronwyn did a solo show. Yeah. And she did really well. So Great. Well done. She was a bit nervous, but I don't understand yes. how she gets nervous. But yeah. And Gemma on the Night Jars has basically got three out of ten as her band now. Um, right. yeah. 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 Which is quite cool. Um, they all went to... to uh, college together yeah and my last gig was the rampant horse yesterday on the sunday in needham market that's the one yeah. little little outdoor outdoor sort of half barn they've got out the back there's really nice if you get a chance to sort of get in contact and and have a gig there they're just you know they don't have a huge amount of live music in needham market so there was a really good turnout there. oh that's amazing good um so yeah and a lot of dogs doggies like was that dogs. was that full band or was that no just rich and i so Richard, i played double yeah. bass and uh luckily because i would had a recent weekend of about two or three double bass shows i didn't get as many calluses <laughs> Oh, that's all right, yeah. That's good. So anyway, after rocketing through absolutely everything that I did, let's get on to some more music. Um, yeah, so what, what are you pointing at? It's already on there. Oh, you've already done it because you're yeah, a genius, yeah. mate. Um, so, yeah, mate. I love this band so much. They're playing at the Maritime Festival two days, two twice in one day. Oh, the twice in one day? Twice in one day. They're, nice. doing, a, they're doing a lockabilly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just say, like, I think they meant to do it, uh, which is not usually what I do. Um, this is their, the track that they will finish their set off with because it's, it's such a good track. This is called Tie Me Down by Hot Trump. While she sleeps, release a news breaking t shirt. And Radio Paola is live and well in the US. Ooh, music. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I, I just. the page up quick enough. <laughs> Um, so yeah uh, thank you to Hot Tramp for that one that was Tie Me Down that's available on all the platforms that is a great song for them live because really they, 
they they do a thing. They get people involved. Oh, they, they get can stick around for the gig list and find out where they're playing. They get You'll see what we're talking too. about. So yeah, I'm going to read the first one. Yeah. Um. So while she sleeps, uh, British metalcore band. If anybody hasn't heard them before, they are amazing. The yeah. North stands for nothing. Good tune. Um. They've released a T-shirt that's meant to spread awareness of their lackluster Spotify royalties, and more broadly, the financial difficulties faced by today's musicians and bands. So the shirt's design consists solely of text. Doesn't even have the band logo on it. Right. It might do on the back. I haven't seen the back, but I've just seen the front. Uh, it reads on the front: one T-shirt is the equivalent to five thousand streams on Spotify. Seventy-six percent of all music in 2019 is streamed and not bought physically or digitally. Band merchandise is the most direct way of supporting an artist. End quote. So the T-shirt is worth twenty-five quid. So if you yeah. imagine twenty-five quid is worth is the equivalent to five thousand streams on Spotify, and you as a fan are not going to be streaming a band's songs five thousand times, not no. in a very short space of time, anyway. I'm listening to a very small pool of music at the moment, mm. um, just because there's a few bands that brought out albums that I'm like mega into, and mm. I'm listening to them on repeat. And even then, I'm probably making well. About a hundred plays a month of that. Yeah, exactly. At most. So if you if you really want to, it's ba- they're basically saying you know if you really want to help a band out or just that you're a big fan of them, then buy merch. Um, yeah. uh, the image that they use on the T-shirt can be used for free by other musicians who are looking to bring out positive changes to the way streaming royalties are cal- <coughs> calculated and dispersed, which I thought was quite interesting. They sort of made it copyright free. That's um, right. Earlier this week, Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor, ooh, amazing guy, uh, published a string of tweets that made clear his immense dissatisfaction with the state of the music streaming industry. Uh, he says, we have to tour. It's the only way we can make a living. Merch helps, but the merch companies make the lion's share. Uh, lion's share. Streaming is pricing artists, old and new, out of careers. So, And I think... Mm. Slipknot are a very successful band. Mm-hmm. They are doing massive shows, and which is great for because the music kind of was it it's great in a loud big loud environment yeah, exactly. but they're having to sell that many tickets mm. just to i mean there's a lot of people in the band there's a lot of people yeah. to pay <laughs> yeah. you know but that's that's quite a big like thing to say for for a band that probably get loads of yeah. streams they've got a, a great listen count mm-hmm. but but i mean five thousand streams would make them 25 quid yeah right when so, you think about that yeah when I you mean, think- that's that. I mean, if you think about it, if 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 you listen to slip like a Slipknot album a month, mm. that's what like ten songs that would need to be five hundred people listening to that album, yeah. once a month. Um, which I mean, you know, to to make them twenty five pounds. Yeah. So if you, you know, I mean, and that that definitely happens for them, obviously. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's not the same as when you used to just buy an album; they'd get twelve quid. No, and you know, it's it. It's all kind of relative as well. Like, the bigger the show, the more it costs to put on, mm-hmm. you know? So it's not, like, ever-increasing profits. It's, yeah, it's it's a hard pill to swallow when you realise that mm-hmm. as much as I would... I love streaming and it's a great way to listen to music, for me to be supporting an artist is by paying to go see a band, go see a ticket, buying merch, stuff like that, which I don't mind because mm. I'd much rather a T-shirt that says JS and Lockerbilly than <laughs> one that says Super Dry. Speaking of that, I mean, uh, so I'm selling those T-shirts for a fiver, right? Five, yeah. I don't mean five, yeah, mm, under the table. Um, basically, if you think about the same rules apply here, that would still mean that I'd have to get a 1,000 streams on Spotify for me to make yeah. five quid. Yeah. And even then, I mean, the T-shirts themselves cost me about £3.60. So I'm only making about £1.40 per T-shirt. Yeah, so, so that's not... Yeah, so, I mean, it does still... But still, I mean, to make £1.40 on Spotify, let me just try and see how much would that would cost. I don't know how I'd do the maths on that, actually. I don't um, know how much money per stream is. Yeah, 25 1? divided by 1.4. So that's 17, so... Uh, 5,000 divided by 17. So I'd have to have 294 streams right. um, on Spotify for, for me to make £1.40. Yeah. So, so that's playing someone playing your album, which is 12 tracks, is it? Yes. So 12 tracks. Um, that's a, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's quite a lot. I mean, that's, that's a uh, lot yeah. of plays on your album. Yeah. So let's do I divide that by 12. No, it's 14, actually. So yeah, I'll just say that. It's about 24 times I'd have to get my album played yeah. a month on Spotify for me to make £1.40. 
Yeah, that's when you put that into perspective, that's not great. Not great at all. <laughs> not great at all. So that's exactly why people are up in arms. Uh, they do sell out, you know, shell out royalties in Spotify and Apple Music. But still, yeah. I mean, you know, if you really want to help a band, share their stuff, buy their merch and go to their shows. Yeah. Don't worry I about don't, streaming their stuff as much. Buy a CD. I need to look into how much other like streaming services pay their artists as well. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, a flat rate or where other people are competing to pay their artists yeah, more. They I know are iTunes are quite good, competing. apparently. Apple Music is, is, is getting better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Anyway, Harley, do you want to read the next story, do you? Uh, Seeing as you found it with your investigative clickings. Yeah, so this is this is something I've uh, I've always thought, and it's good that it's getting some... Uh, getting some notice, but Radio Paola is alive and well in the US. What's Radio Paola? Radio Paola. Piola. Piola. Um, it basically pay to play. So mm-hmm. people play, lobbying uh, radio stations to play their song of choice to, yeah. to get them to get returns. Absolutely. Now, this has been going on since the 70s um, where, so people go, right, I'll pay you this much money for you to play our song uh you know, here's an example here somewhere. Um, if I can find One music it. manager, that down there, um, admitted to directly paying DJs yeah. 10 oh, the, grand. Yeah, that's $10,000. Uh, here's, a, here's a thing here. Uh, the, the main bit I saw was, um, yeah, Rolling, uh, that he paid, somebody paid $50,000 right. in exchange for 800 plays of, of his latest song on a major station. That's now amazing. that, and that's recent. That's not. That's yeah. not an old. That's that's claim. within the last few years, I'm sure. Now, that would be a lot back in the day of people buying art, buying your songs, because you go, uh, if I get 800 plays and people go, I like this, I'll go and listen to it. If they hear it enough times, they know it's going to be heard. They know it's going to be in HMV. That's the other thing. If you listen to an artist that's not particularly popular, you can't guarantee that it's going to be in your your mm. local. Uh, uh, music stockists, yeah, absolutely. so it kind of makes you. It's an investment to make a return, and I've always felt this has happened on on British radio stations. There's artists that have been played, and they play their songs every day mm-hmm. for for a month or so, and you're like, I don't know anyone who likes this music. Exactly. I know there's a little bit of a um, an echo chamber of the people I listen. Mm. The songs I like will be more likely to be liked by my friends because mm. that's how circles work but yeah. still there are artists that are that can that are put on pedestals by radio stations and you're like no to anybody I yeah mean, alan kovac who's the ceo of 117 label group agrees um that it's happening he says uh that everyone is aware of the payments going uh going on and that a song can't break into the top 15 today without illegal payments yeah yeah but uh, yeah it's kind of and there's a talk going back to streaming and stuff like that. Uh, a Rolling Stone report noted that if someone pays three and a half thousand dollars to get a song played on the radio, they would need about a million streams for that one song just to break even. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's kind of what they're doing. I mean, it used to be the fact of, you know, you'd pay people to play your stuff on the mainstream radio and people would go out and buy a CD or a single. Yeah, and then which to mark up on that's much better. Exactly. But nowadays we're just trying to get people to stream a yeah. lot. And, and you know... That's and that's the way that people used to do it. Was it? Uh, I'm trying to see here about um, kind of how they used to do. It. I mean, what they used to do was be like, you know, bring an album into a radio station, stuff with cash and drugs, and yeah. just be like, you know, there you go, play play this stuff. I mean, it's just that today payments are made more covertly through like shell companies and mobile apps. Yeah, so it's a lot much harder to trace. I found it really weird when I read the bit about the mobile app. So there's people have set up apps that you can download from the app store to mm. directly be sent to a company uh to go here's a song play it lots right and large amounts of money go through through these just basic apps that it's are made mad, up i mean uh one music manager admitted he t- admitted to directly paying djs 10 grand as compensation for playing his client's song on the radio this eventually led to the label signing his client which allowed him to recover his investment so I mean he's paid ten grand, then he gets signed, and then he makes that ten grand back on on you know a three sixty deal maybe. And uh, this and uh, one thing that's said in this article is things aren't likely to change as long as the radios are the main source for finding music. Yeah, and I mean, the thing with Spotify and stuff when you get new music algorithms, you can't really 
pay a piece of AI. No, you, you can probably you can pay, pay yourself onto a, onto a playlist. Mm, you, I um, think people would probably do, that. Because there, there are, there are uh, playlist makers and people who um, work for companies to, mm. to make playlists of the songs that will fit in with what people like. So mm. you can find the right playlist and hear new music every day. Mm. Um, and there's, like you say, the algorithms, the daily mix and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so... What do you think we do to, to get around it? I've always felt that the day of the radio is kind of on near its end, and I feel yeah, like... Don't say that, we've got our radio soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think online. the day of, main, of mainstream radio, because we're not mainstream. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know how to, how to fix this. It's a lot to do, and they've, you know... As I, long as money re- exists, people are going to pay people off. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning that the whole... This has been illegal in the UK for quite a while now. Uh, I know this, this article is mostly talking about the US, but I'm, I'm almost certain it still happens in the UK. I've been saying this oh, for a while God. off air that I'm like, hmm. How is this on? Uh, yeah. How do people like and, this song? And the amount of people who go listen to a song, like, who's listening to this? Yeah, yeah. This is terrible. But then it's like, say, mm-hmm. if it gets played on the radio, the like then it Kayola results in... has always been a kind of a thing, legal or non-legal, because, I mean, you know, basically if you've got the money to fund a very good manager or a very yeah. good record label then you're going to get your stuff on the radio yeah and it is you had to pay money to be able to get there it's just you're going through legal things if you're just literally just like i'm just going to give money straight to the dj and bribe them that's wrong yeah but it's still you still do have to have money it's just where you place it is the important part that's it it's a it's a real problem i think because it's not it's that's what that is the barrier from making the music industry meritocratic Yes, the good artists get heard. The bad ones don't. I don't want to say bad artists, but you know, the less the maybe less uh, well written songs go to the bottom of the pile. The best written songs go to the top of the pile. You the, wish. the fashions are uh, are completely bypassed. You know, maybe. Well, yeah, or at least the fashions aren't fabricated. Right. Uh, a scene is made of what people want rather than what people are fed. Hmm. Um, Interesting. I mean, that's where you'd get completely different genres and stuff like that coming yeah. out uh, because it wouldn't be sitting there going, right, we, we need to play, make a trap tune uh, mm. because trap is popular right now. It would just be like, oh, I want to write like a folk song. And then yeah. suddenly that becomes number one. But, you know, we're living in pipe dreams here. Anyway, yeah. let's get on to the next thing because we would, I was having a little dream this morning. This <laughs> morning. Jingle. Harley. Yes. As a musician. Yes. Are you allowed an ego? Am I personally or... No, well, I'm a bass a player. Musician. I can't have any uh, emotion <laughs> or personality Face. whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, the, the question is more to do with um, should you, you know, be modest all the time or should you be constantly talking yourself up? I think there's a, there's a great middle point to be had within this. Mm-hmm. We've all met artists who go, I'm the best. And you go, yeah, you're pretty good, but... Not mm. a good charm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you've got artists that are really good, and I know a lot of artists who who make some great music and just don't have that belief or confidence in themselves mm-hmm. to uh, to be able to push themselves to where they deserve to be mm. uh, and to be credited for the great music that they create. Mm. Um, and there's a, there's a handful of, of names that pop into my head of people I'm going, you're so good, you should get out there more. But, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think... Uh, Confidence and ego are, are, are mildly different linked. Thing, yeah, they're different, but they're yeah. linked mm. to a certain point. Um, I don't know, like, I was thinking this the other day, that I don't have enough, uh, even if it's fake confidence, mm. I'm, I'm a bad actor, uh, <laughs> of going, yeah, I, I can do this, I can yeah. do this, you know, and kind of just sort of fake it till you make it almost. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a big kind of thing It to is do. a big thing. But, I mean, the the big lesson that we're often taught is that egotistical, bad, modesty, good. Yeah. Modesty, good. And that's the problem with, uh, you know, I was listening to this really interesting interview with this very famous writer, and so famous that I've forgotten her name, um, but she was talking, and it was on Women's Hour, and they were talking about how, you know, how good she is at what she does, however she constantly talks herself down. And they had somebody there who was a sort of psychotherapist and, yeah. and going through it, and she was saying, you know, I mean, you, you have obviously been lauded, you've won, won awards, you do big speeches to big crowds who all think you're great, yeah. um, but you constantly talk yourself down. When you were growing up, did your parents, did your mother and father ever say to you, 
uh, you're not very good at what you do. She was like, no, actually, it's the complete opposite. They were very supportive. They always told me that you can do whatever you want to do. However, they were always saying, don't brag about what you do. Right. It's a, you know, there's a lesson that you get taught when you're younger. It's just like, you know, uh, be good at what you do, but don't rub it in people's faces. Mm. And that is good, a good lesson. But when that starts off, it's a small thing. It's just like, okay, so if you've got a cool toy that a kid at school hasn't got, you don't sit there and say, ha ha, I got this. And you don't. It, you just don't do that. But then that spreads out to later on that you make an, an achievement later on. If you've got some really good grades in school, you can't, you know, so you don't sit there and go, I get better grades than you, um, because that's just not right. Yeah. But it's also that also stops you from sitting there going, I'm really proud of myself in front of people because yeah. you worry that you're going to be putting them down. And do you think that teaching uh, people modest, modesty, I mean, in our generation, we've had that, mm. um, has also knocked on to the fact of people get anxiety and depression because they're kind yeah. of told not to feel too good about themselves because they'll get too big for their boots. Yeah, I I think that that there is something to be said about being, like I say, bragging a little bit. Mm. Not bragging, but just being like, I'm good at this. I'm going to celebrate the fact that I'm good at this. Mm. Uh, And not being afraid to tell people, I'm good at this. You watch. Yeah, it's kind of like... And that's kind of what ego is, is telling someone that you're good at something or or just coming across and going, yeah, I know I'm good. Yeah. You know, and um, I think ego's not as bad a thing as people make out because what people think is ego is actually just too much ego in the same way that pasta's good but too much pasta's bad yeah i mean it's like you're saying be economical with your egotism yeah (laughs) eco ego eco ego yeah Yeah. there's a great um podcast uh uh, distraction pieces uh which is scurious pip it's his uh podcast and on there he had wes borland right okay um i know the quote that you want to say but you can't say it on the radio uh i don't know if i do um (laughs) But he was talking about Fred Durst, and he says that Fred dead first. Dead first. <laughs> That's weird. Mm. Um, he is a particularly uh, high ego character, but he says although he is high high ego and sometimes may have been a little bit hard to work with because he was very much all eyes on me mm-hmm. in that sense. Tupac. He was the um, he was the person that got got. Uh, Limp Bizkit famous because Noticed, yeah. he was the one that would go into a venue and go, you need to book my band because we will fill this gig mm-hmm. and we will have every person in that on that dance floor dancing and absolutely loving what we do. And he would literally go in mm-hmm. with that and go, hi, get us a gig now. Yeah. You won't regret it. And it takes a real amount of, like I say, ego and confidence and just, just blind faith mm. to be able to do that, never having never played in that town before. Mm. But, I mean, uh, like, you know, it, it has been turned into a bit of a dirty word, hasn't it? Egotism yes. yeah, and I think being it's... egotistical. Because, you know, just having a, se- a sense of self-worth, I like to sort of have a bit of ego about me, uh, but to the point where I still do put myself down on stage and off stage, yeah. um, because sometimes I feel like it's a bit of a leveller, um, you know, because if, if you're expecting people to look up at you all the time, um, you distance yourself from them and you kind of, I don't know, it's like you kind of other, they start to other you and you don't get yeah. to be friends with a, with who comes and watches you. Great analogy, which I think you might uh, you it's, might relate it's with. It's hossing it down out it's there, really isn't it? going. Absolutely hossing it down with rain. You might relate to this better than any non-musicians listening, but... Uh, if you've been at a gigs, um, when you're on a bit of a stage, it's kind of nice because it, it gives you a little Unless bit of Unless you've got bogeys up your nose because people can see them. Yeah, that's a problem. But when you're a little bit of a, a step up, it give, you know people are more likely to keep an eye on you and watch you uh, in a kind of, oh, look, there's a band on the stage and if you're just on the same level as them. Mm. But at the same time, if that stage is too big, you're a little bit distant from them. Mm. So if you're playing like on a, like a balcony... People aren't going to sort of be as uh, open to talk to you mm. and have that conversation back with you because that the distance is too much. And I think ego yeah. is like that stage. Yeah, I think so. you're right. So, yeah, I think, you know, be eco with your ego, ladies and gentlemen. But don't put yourself down, eh? Yeah. So let's get on to the next part, shall we? It is the gig list, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I want to do a quick shout out because this Sunday I'm playing solo, my own stuff, which we're going to finish the show off with. Yeah. Um, 
uh, at Sunday this this Sunday coming at 6pm I'm going to be at the Three Wise Monkeys now there is music going on at the Maritime Festival which we'll talk about yeah. and, but I'll be playing after that music is finished so you've still got time to check out that stuff and come and see me it's a nice easy walk so uh, make a day of it thank uh, you right my Harley. only gig that I've got this weekend is uh, it's a fairly last minute gig at the Bull in Colchester Chart Attack will be oh, playing cool. in Colchester so any Essex listeners mm. uh, make your way down there and we'll uh, have you boogieing all night that'd be great on Friday night yeah? Friday night 16 it's Friday night. Oh, yeah. Yes, this Friday night. Cool. Um, so we've got this Friday at 8 o'clock at Manning's in Ipswich. We have uh, Remedy. Nice. Haven't seen them play in a little oh, while. Yeah, exactly. Great band. So, yeah, great guys. Um, yeah. So, yeah, enjoy yourselves, guys. Awesome. Uh, we also have the uh, Ghosts of Men single launch. Ooh, it's so exciting. Uh, which they will be joined by Hot Tramp. Hot Tramp. There we go. Uh, Flames of Lizard Birds. Are you going to say that in the same voice? Uh, and back to the point. Back to the point. There we go. So that, that should be a good one. Uh, what we got going on Saturday? Uh, Saturday. Uh, that. So yeah, that's going on on Saturday. That that oh, that one is actually. Is it my bad? Yeah, Sorry. Just, no, it's my formatting on the notes. Oh. So yeah, Ghost of Men. Oh, uh, that gig is on the Steamboat Tavern Steamboat. on Saturday. So. Uh, We've got Ipswich Maritime Festival this hey, weekend. Hey, so we've got playing. Yeah, exactly. So we've got 17th to the 18th, that's Saturday and Sunday at the Quayside in Ipswich uh, on the BBC Suffolk stage just outside Cult. We've got from 11, we've got Poppy Scarlet. 12, we've got Phil Jackson, the Dur Dur Durs. Uh, 1 p.m., we've got Reb Kappa. 2 p.m., we've got Tore Down. 3 p.m., the Silver Release. 4 p.m., Hot Tramp. So they're playing twice that day. Hot Tramp. Hot uh, Tramp. Uh, 5 p.m., we've got Jade May Jean woo, from Good Times Republic represent 6 p.m the bay horse boys they're good i've seen them now Lovely. they're really good uh 7 p.m back porch band nice classic and 8 p.m they got the king's men and on sunday 11 30 we've got blackjack 59 1 p.m we've got exit 13 2 p.m talk of the town hey. lovely bunch of people love them uh 3 p.m got light body Wonderful. old school right yeah. uh, and 4 p.m we got the martels also so, yeah. old school enjoy yourselves yeah on uh, maritime That's... festival what's next buddy cool so we have also uh on the saturday we've I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. We've got Roddy Radiation and the Scarbilly Rebels at the railway um, on Foxhall Road, Ipswich. Yeah. There we yeah go. That's at nine o'clock on the Saturday. We'll have to shout over the uh, rain. And the rain is hossing it down. Um, Phil Jackson and the Dododos, that's Saturday at 12 o'clock, so I've got that as a separate thing. Oh. Uh, but also, Sunday, important. Icebreakers is on. <laughs> cool. Go see Rob. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anyone under 18, uh, it's a great place to uh, meet other musicians and Absolutely. show you stuff. So. Uh, that's August um, 18th. Uh, that's Sunday at 2.30. Uh, what's next, buddy? Uh, we also have Pop Gun, Pop Gun live at Isaac's, which I'm really looking forward to seeing them. I haven't seen them. Are you going to go time. see them? Are you? I'm thinking I might make a make a visit. Yeah, good. Sunday at three o'clock. They yeah. played for Robert Downey Jr.'s 50th birthday they party. They did indeed. Yeah, so you can go and watch them, and then come and see me afterwards. It's, six it's a o'clock. full day. Exactly. It's a full day music. And then on Sunday, the last thing we've got here is the Briar Banks Jazz. If you want something a bit more chilled out on the Sunday during Maritime Festival at 1:30 at the Briar Bank Brewing Company, just behind Isaac's, they've got some wonderful world-class jazz musicians so yeah go and check them out um thanks for listening ladies yeah, and gentlemen thank you very much um, we have been the harley and josh show we have uh josh you want to tell us about this music um i've just released this single this week uh on all the different scale and streaming platforms and on Bandcamp and stuff if you want to actually help me uh buy it on Bandcamp if you can um but oh, yeah please. this one i recorded with ikoko some amazing musicians gave them all solos at the end because they're just all so good um so yeah please check this one out this is all about basically being uh having an argument with someone and just going for a walk uh instead so this is called instead of yeah screaming in their face yeah don't do well, that do it on a podcast instead Hi. I'll see you later, mate. All right, see you later, man. Love you. Bye. Bye, let's get wet.
so hateful, what a pity We spend that time trying to put each other down Why don't you say something good to me? What a pity We're so hateful, we're so hateful, what a pity We spend that time just trying to put each other down Why don't you say something good to me? Take a Thank you. 